What's up YouTube, it's Critical69 bringing you another critical guide on how to take your Conqueror's Blade gameplay to the next level. Today we're going to be reviewing the new unit, Modal Battalion, aka Dynastic Guards. Before we get into the meat of this testing, I would like you to please consider hitting that like button below as well as possibly hitting that subscribe button. Over 93% of you are not subscribed to my channel and it would greatly, greatly assist my exposure on YouTube if you could help do that. This in turn will then grow my Twitch. If you don't know my Twitch, it's critical 629 uh, Twitch and I stream Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern. In addition, if you look below in the description, there'll be a number of links to the infantry testing and the cavalry testing. While you're working your way through this video and the videos below in the description, please use the topic chapters. So if you highlight at the bottom of your video, you'll see chapters. Use those to circumvent around watching the entire video, jump to what you need to see. Um, after that you watch the video, if you liked it, like I said, hit that like. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike. Um, but if you did hit the list dislike, tell me what you didn't like so I can make it better in the future or leave a comment, you know, so we can have a good old debate about these units and how these units are going to change the face of CB. If you don't believe me, watch the video. In order to unlock the Madao Battalion, you first need to pop over to your Season 8 Seasonal Challenges. Under Seasonal Challenges, you're going to switch your Season, which most of you should already be there, uh, to Season 8. Once you start that, you're going to see three units. You need to work your way through the Cudgel Monks, the Grey Hair Garrison, and then you can unlock the Medal Battalion. So as you make your way towards the Medal Battalion, you're going to come across five sets of challenges. And each of these challenges will allow, make you do different things around the um, town, around the uh, matches, around uh, the open world, stuff like that. And as you work your way through, the very first thing that you're going to come across is you're going to get free Medal Battalion. Now, these Medal Battalion are just three day Medal Battalion, and they uh, are level 15, and they have a couple good doctrines on them. Once you hit the third tier, that's when you can actually unlock the unit. And this is a level this is when you get to level the unit up. So you, they start at level one, they work their way to level 30. Um, the biggest thing in here that you want to work towards is the doctrine, which is this one. So don't just stop at the challenges for the unit. Make your way to this doctrine. Also unlock this doctrine. Uh, right now, like I said, this doctrine uh, is a little bit buggy, uh, as in I don't think it does what it's supposed to do. I'm going to have more on that during the doctrine discussion, which is later on in the video. Now advice for these guys not only is there this doctrine you also need to work your way over to housing which is the capital of long ting and in once you actually unlock the unit so you finish that quest line the or sorry the third set of challenges once you finish that that's when you're going to get a quest to go talk to the watchman in housing from there he's going to direct you to another person in housing and then you're going to uh, work your way through a couple quests it's like some kill quests and stuff like that uh, not that difficult you just have to do them in sieges but make sure you do this because this is a season only doctrine and that doctrine is the 200 cavalry damage doctrine which is right here. You can only get this by doing the quest line, and that quest line is gone after this season. So Kajo Monks has the same situation, and the Boomer Bros, aka the Grey Hair Garrison, also has that same situation. A lot of you have reached out to me and said, how did I get the Guardian Doctrine from Shield Maidens? It's not possible. That was a seasonal quest line. You gotta make sure you do your seasonal quest lines. The second you unlock the unit, not the the a uh, three-day contract. You have to actually unlock the unit. Once you do that, that's when the quest line starts and you'll get a little prompt to check your quest and then you move your way through it. Pretty easy quest line for the Madao. It was a little bit harder for the Grey Hair Garrison and Kajal Monks was pretty easy, but make sure you do this. Let's jump right into it, starting off with the Madao Battalion. The Madao Battalion, when they turn level 30, will turn into Dynastic Guards. They're essentially the same unit. One's leveled, one's not. 
the leadership for these is 305. That is insanely good because if you cap out around 770 leadership or 780 leadership, you can essentially bring a gold unit, the Medal Battalion or Dynastic Guards, plus two purple units. This is insanely good for territory wars. Most of the applications that I'm going to be applying in this video relate to territory wars. Some do relate to siege, but I geared most of my testing and how I'm going to be using these in end game situations, aka territory wars and ranked. From there, we can take a look at essentially what I a little tip that I do. So on this page, you can see their uh, their armor and they look pretty obvious. OK, so what I personally do here's a little tip or trick to start off. You throw on the desert eagle. What is it? Desert eagle uniform with a little hat. These essentially, if they don't see the tip of the weapon, they don't know that they're Madao Battalion. So mess around with this, take advantage of it, and you'll see some uh, heroes and some units getting yeeted into your uh, Madao Battalion and just get shredded. From there, we can jump over to the veterancy lines. I personally chose the bottom line. Now, all of my testing was done with zero doctrines and zero vet lines. I left them blank. They were level 30, but I wanted to ensure a strong baseline and then adjust accordingly. Whether I decided to go top or bottom would be based on my testing results and how they interact with infantry and cavalry. Because yes, this unit is geared to stop cavalry, but this unit shreds infantry. As a result of my testing, which you can see in the description below, I determined that bottom line is a lot stronger than top line for territory war situations. Your territory war situations are going to revolve around you holding a point and soaking as much damage as possible while stopping all cav that tries to essentially break through your hold. This will result in bottom line. Bottom line gives them insane defenses. It gives them more health. It gives them more uh, defense against ranged attacks. It gives them more, take a look, more slashing defense, more piercing defense, more defense against rear attacks. I mean, in a territory situation, ideally you're, uh, you have your back against a wall and you're defending from a situ like a gate or a breach and you know what's behind you, but some situations happen where you could mess up and your rear could be exposed and they take less damage, which is pretty good. If you're looking for more burst damage in scenarios like sieges where you're kind of solo and trying to do as much damage as possible, pad that score, get MVP, then yes, top line is viable, but keep in mind that the longer you're alive, the more damage you can do. Um, the Medal Battalion already do a considerable amount of burst damage and defensive stun damage with their brace that you don't really need to go top line. Test it out, see what works for you. But based off my so far two territorial wars that I've used them, as well as my, you know, say, 20 to 40 battles of siege in them so far. Um, I, my experience shows that uh, my, with my play style, I prefer bottom. Now let's spend a couple minutes on their skills and where you can really use these and the different formations and how to respond to different situations. Um, on this screen, you'll see a few of their unit traits. And the first one is called Wall of Blades. Now, this one is complemented by a doctrine that you can equip and increase this by one second. We'll talk about that once we go over doctrines. Uh, it essentially stops enemy cavalry for one second, and it also inflicts slow on them. Immovable. Now, this is a huge effect. So instead of uh, usually cav chargers that come in, specifically Lancer cav uh, that come in, they usually send the unit flying. This does not happen for Madao. They just instead stand their ground and take bleed damage. That's pretty cool um, considering a lot of other units will just get sent flying. Fire resistant, that's always effective or helpful because you know you're going to be dealing with uh, flames of course. Flame boys plus um, 
ball sack boys, you know. So uh, this is always very, very helpful. Now for their unit orders. So the first one is known as Madao defense. And this is what you're going to be doing. Essentially, it's a pike brace. All the damage that's done in Madao defense is pike. And this is really good for um, bracing uh, incoming cav charges because they also get a damage reduction buff which um, I don't think anyone has really noted, but the testing that has shown that while they're in this formation, they get a damage reduction buff, which is really, really good. So whenever you're not bursting down the enemy with two or three, you need to keep them in Madao defense. Do not XV these guys. Do not do anything other than just keep them in one and then cycle two, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, you know, something like that. Um, with two being Madao March. Now, Madao March is when they lunge forward um, and they essentially kind of knock back the enemy while doing a significant amount of damage. Then you got their carnage, which is their charge. And then when they income or when they hit someone, they swing. So there's a couple issues here. So a lot of people are charging in with carnage to close the gap, which is great. But for me, I'm not really using them in a closing of the gap situation. Uh, in defensive territory situation, territory war situations, I'm advancing with or staying st still rather, and I'm not really charging into the enemy. Uh, if I'm attacking on territory wars, then I'm not the first one going in. Uh, that's either a stalwart or, you know, maybe a palace guard unit. So I'm supporting that push and holding my ground. So using carnage to advance in territory wars is not that effective. However, it is effective if you use it after you use Madao March. So essentially, the way you're going to be using territory or these in territory wars is one, bracing and holding position. If you're advancing, you're not rushing the advance. You're only taking them out of their brace if you are essentially winning the fight or you need to essentially do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Because once you hit two, all the enemies move, all of your Madao battalion move forward and either lunge or swing at the enemy, dealing some damage. If you time it and you immediately after that use Carnage, you can do a boatload of damage in a short amount of time. Now, some people are saying, well, why wouldn't I engage with Carnage first? The issue with Carnage is that all of the, your unit is kind of scattered coming from your uh, defensive three ranks formation because you're essentially going to be in your brace formation, which boosts your defense. That's three ranks versus attack formation, which is your trapezoid formation. So you're going to be in that scattered formation. If you charge forward, the first time that one of your Madao hits someone, it essentially stops the charge, which I've noticed in a lot of videos and testing. It stops the charge for your entire unit, and then they just swing in place. So if they're not directly all in your target um, location, then they're going to just miss swings. So what you need to do is use two first because it actually moves them closer and causes them a little bit of a speed boost to go towards the enemy. And then once they hit, they swing. And then once that's over, that's when you can quickly use your carnage and let that swing go through. And then you do a shitload of boat uh, burst damage. So that's the way that I've been playing them. And I've been extremely successful in both sieges and territory wars. I might have some territory wars clips here to show you guys. Uh, I'm not supposed to, but uh, because usually I'm in the wolf syndicate and we usually like to refrain from showing territory war videos for a season after. But this one I uh, can use because um, it doesn't really have our comms in it or anything like that. It's more just showing how I used the Madao Battalion on um, defensive situations. Now for doctrines. So there's a number of different doctrine uh, combinations that you can use with the, these guys. But my first advice is if you don't have the ones that are currently on my screen right now, which uh, essentially you're going to be kind of switching a few in and out depending on the situation, depending if you're attacking or depending if you're um, defending. Uh, you kind of really need to figure out what you're going to be taking the most damage from or what you're going to be inflicting the most damage on because that's basically how damage is calculated. So for me, this is what I found that has worked really well because it 
pretty much preps me to do max damage against infantry. So these guys already stop Cav in their tracks. The testing is that Hussars do go pretty much get stopped and Madao use with a few few casualties. Armagers pretty much get stopped with a few casualties. Um, and then Monastic Knights are the biggest cav threat to these guys. Essentially, the Monastic Knights charge is really strong. It can go through them and then they come back and they do some more damage with like brawler status because they're so beefy. But in the end, Madao will win all those fights. But so you pretty much need to know if the place you're defending is has open cav charge lanes. A lot of fiefs or cities don't. Um, obviously, the open world fights, if you're getting pursued, um, or the smaller cities, I think they're fiefs, um, they're, it's open. So that's a different type of play style, and you're going to want to target your doctrines to that map as to say where you're going to be taking a lot of cav hits you want to make sure you gear your defenses and your attacks towards cav but if you're in a city fight there's not many um chokes that you're going to hold where a hussar a mono or a armager can fully charge in and get that full gallop towards you um if you're smart you put your medals around corners which i will show you a video of me putting them around corners and there's no real momentum for the cab to do anything so no matter what i'm gonna stop them and i don't really have to worry about doing burst damage to them i can of course but because i have support of a team whether that's flame boys behind me an additional 40 stalwarts braced you know you're not just using them in a solo situation which is completely different in sieges where you can't really rely on your team too much and you have to react to the scenario around you in a territory wars it's much more controlled if you have a solid stack that you know you've planned and done preparation and you all know what you're doing so with that in mind i built them for burst damage so you got the breakthrough doctrine which is pretty straightforward you got the sieges which is actually does damage because city fights are sieges a lot of people didn't know that city fights are sieges so this extra damage is huge this is brawling with infantry because the biggest threat to madao is going to be infantry uh then i added a few epic doctrines which i obtained through epic chess they're very rare uh you had to have done a couple seasons ago i had them stored and then i waited for this moment because these this unit doesn't qualify as a spear unit or a range unit or a or a sword and shield unit it doesn't qualify as those normal doctrines that we you know try to get from treatises instead it qualifies as a special one which is why you don't see many doctrines on this page but i gave them piercing damage because I'm going to be keeping them in their brace format or their Madao defense uh, formation as much as possible. Um, plus piercing defense, the biggest threat to Madao is piercing. Um, we can have that discussion where 40s, uh, high penetration units like um, obviously Cav, uh, Pavis, Imperial Gunners, um, obviously flame boys and falconetti gunners but that's a threat to everyone and that's blunt defense so you don't really need to boost their blunt defense you need to boost the things that they're going to be taking a lot of damage from which is going to be braced 40s which is piercing damage they're going to be taking damage from uh like i said range uh and cav um so increasing their piercing damage for me i thought was the most viable option um then you got piercing armor penetration. Like I said, it's the same way as damage. So a couple of things that can be switched out here, which is, you know, some of you guys don't have these. Um, or maybe some of you are asking why I don't use increases damage versus cavalry by 200. If I knew I was going to be in open world fights where there was going to be a lot of cav, then I would definitely use this. There's some cav in um, city fights, but for the most part, it's generally infantry. Um, so this is a little bit overkill because essentially I'm already stopping the unit. I don't need necessarily need to kill it. I can kill it. Don't get me wrong. Cause we do a lot of fucking damage, Madao. Um, but I don't need that extra damage to kill it, you know? So this is kind of a, a little bit of a waste Then this one. So I originally thought this doctrine was going to be insanely good. It's essentially adding, you know, that one second stop plus slow. 
I thought this was doubling that time, which is, would be a st pretty much a stun on Cav that come into your Madao for an extra second. We did some testing, and unfortunately, this isn't working right right now. It actually results in your Madao taking more damage than it would if it didn't have this equipped. Not sure how this works exactly, but for some reason, something's messed up with it. We got to do more testing with it. I think the devs need to take a look at it or something like that. So I wouldn't suggest this until I personally, obviously I'm not using it. So my source says that this is busted and I'm going to trust my source. Um, I haven't done my personal testing on this. If I do do that personal testing, I will be sure to make a video of it. But for now, I would steer clear of it. Um, things that can be switched out. Health. Some of you have the health. You can put in health over penetration right here. Um, of course, the beefier, the better. Um, and maybe maybe you want to put some slashing damage and stuff there. But what I found is that the piercing damage is the most important because of the fact that when they use um, Madao March, which is their two, their first hit, or if they're too far away, is a poke which means I'm pretty sure it says stab in the description, which means it's piercing. The second hit of it is slashing. It definitely looks like it's slashing, but I'm just going to assume that the Madao defense plus half of uh, Madao March is piercing. So I think that's a safe bet to go with piercing. Uh, they already do plenty slashing damage. Rather than walk you through the entire spreadsheet, which is what I did during my Shield Maiden video, I'm instead just going to summarize it for you right now. Madao need to be unlocked by every person in this game right now. They have completely changed the meta. They have pretty much uh, bypassed the 40 meta for Debrachios. They can obliterate an Imperial Pike Walk. Yes, the Imperial Pike Walk can still knock them down, but the damage is negligible. The only thing that's going to damage them is the units that come in after the Imperial Pike Walk. They obliterate stalwarts. It does benefit to have them maybe behind a stalwart, not completely necessary. Most breach holds or most defensive holds will be held with pretty much Modao, Flame Boys, and any filler unit in there. You want to throw a Pavis in there to do extra damage on the Onslaught. If you want to throw uh, an F1 formation for the Braccio scattered in there to stop some more units coming in. You want to put a Braced uh, Palace Guard in there, a Braced Stalwart in there. Whatever you want, the biggest damage output and the biggest damage prevention will come from the Medau across the board. They're only 305 leadership. Most of you can bring them with another gold or them with a, another purple. And then you pretty much cycle out of territory wars. This unit needs to be unlocked. I'm going to keep working my way towards or through summarizing. So cavalry, don't worry about hussars. Don't worry about armagers. They will take damage, but don't worry about them. You're going to kill them. Um, if you have any other unit around to help with that, you're going to kill them. Monastic knights are the biggest threat for cav to them. Liao's don't stand a chance. Kashyyyk's don't stand a chance. Then you got infantry. Infantry, the biggest threat are ranged infantry to these guys. So that's javelins, all types of javelins. Enough throws, piercing damage, high pen, does a lot of damage to these guys. Imperial arcs, Imperial archers, uh, pavis, tertios, they all do damage. That's why you need a little shield unit in front. Doesn't matter what type of shield unit, just to prevent the onslaught of bullets. You do that, you're good. Of course, Flame Boys and Falcon Eddy Gunners are going to do a boatload of damage to these guys slowly over time, but they will die. You know, Falcos, what does... They, they kill everything. Flame Boys, they pretty much kill everything. So that's to be expected. Don't curb your playstyle to counter them with this unit. You need to dive them as a hero or have a longbow pick them off or a dual blade back, back cat or back kill them, something like that because the Madao aren't really going to help you too much targeting those units. Now for the uh, melee infantry. Palace Guards top line shred these guys, but Palace Guards top line also lo lose and get shredded by a lot of units that can just block the Madao from taking damage. So 
top line palace cards going into these guys pretty strong if it's 1v1 but you don't really have to worry about that in territorial situations because there's going to be supporting units to back you up and just destroy the onslaught from the palace guards um palace guards still good uh i do like those units stalwarts pretty much uh get obliterated by Madao. Um, they do obviously hold their ground for a little bit, um, but if a stalwart advances into them, you just uh, keep them your Madao. Oh, back to palace guards. The reason why top line palace guards shred uh, these guys is because top line palace guards have a knockback. The knockback is only on top line, and we'll take a look at this right now. I'm currently bottom line. But see this wonderful thing? Attacking enemies can daze them. That's huge because that daze will knock the braced Madao out of its formation or out of its Madao defense for a second. And then it'll go back into it. But that's enough time to do burst damage. And that's why um, top line palace guards are really strong against these. So be on the lookout for that. If you see a charging palace guard into your Madao, be very weary or back it up with a unit. Have or back up your unit or have another um plan for that whether it's trying to burst damage them or something like that don't just keep them braced um other than that um there isn't many threats to this unit 40s um obviously you don't charge into 40s because it's a high penetration unit they're gonna get destroyed by them but you're not gonna be doing that um uh, a xv 40 in the open field or them coming through and pushing as like a long range DPS will do a lot of damage to Madao. But ideally you have something like a stalwart sitting in front of the Madao and they're tanking most of that kind of passive damage. Azaps get shredded, Berserkers get shredded, uh, Siladar's bottom line do beat Madao, but most people don't use Siladar's most of the time, Siladars will get shredded by any other unit that engages with your Madao, so they're not a huge threat. Um, that's pretty much all the heavy hitters. Um, some interactions with heroes is most short swords uh, will die to Madao. Uh, the ultimate does knock them for a second, but then you can get up to then one. It's a pretty quick recovery. Same with long sword, same with maul. Um, same with musket bomb uh, when they're in that Madao defense they just take like zero damage from a lot of sources unless it's a really high penetration source so glaive ultimate obviously works longbow ultimate obviously works uh, spear dismount works um, but when a hero which um, I will show you a clip in a second when a hero dismounts into Madao Madao kill him it's just they get shredded pike I don't even know what to say about Pike. Pike is insanely good. Pike can um, one phase through them, two stun them on the, during the phase, three uh, use its ultimate to knock down a line of Madao, and then you're really subject to taking a lot of damage because you don't want knock down Madao. You want your Madao in um, Madao defense or bursting down people with two then three. Um, so unfortunately you're always going to have to react to heroes engaging units. Whenever there's a hero, um, most of the time, if you don't respond to that hero, your unit's gonna take damage. So this unit is not immortal. Thanks for sticking it out during this video. I know I tried to rapid fire through the one-on-one -on -one fights because realistically, it's not very important for you to know a one-on-one. -on -one. It does establish a baseline for my testing and then I know what to look for when I'm going out and doing sieges ranked or what to be more concerned of during Territory Wars. Um, I just went over that, but if you liked this video, if you have any other comments, if you uh, have questions about my testing, be sure to provide the comments below as well as review the two other videos that actually go through the extensive testing that we went through for certain units and how to establish a proper baseline when dealing with territory war applications. Thanks so much for sticking around. Again, I stream 6 p.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitch critical 629 please drop over there say hi give me a you know a follow um and don't forget to subscribe on youtube below it's the biggest way to help right now 